Hello, this is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com, TottyTalksCrafts.com, uh, YouTube, and Etsy, and CroneFindlay.etsy.com, and Facebook, Noreen Crone Findlay Designs. Today, I'm going to be showing you the, squish it in here, the Thumbelina Loom. There it is. The banner does not quite fit into the frame, so I'll just flutter it along here. Now, the Thumbelina Loom is the dearest little loom that I just designed for Dewberry Ridge uh, looms, and Gary and Donna make the um, make the Thumbelina. But I've designed uh, the how to um, how to weave and make cords and braids on it. And so I'm going to be showing in this video, I'm going to introduce you to how you make banners and bunting like the Thumbelina banner and like the little banner that says, happy. The, when you put uh, the tiny bun, uh, bunting banners uh, on chopsticks like this, you can take a cake and stick the chopsticks into the cake and then the bunting will sit up on top and you can use the Thumbelina loom to make any name or word that you want. The, with the Thumbelina loom come instructions for several different projects. Little pouches that you clip on with a clip to a key ring or a pocket or something and amulet bags there to hold small treasures and other good things and also with the uh, loom comes the instructions on how to make this gorgeous woven flower now I've sewn a pin on the back because I like to wear them uh, on my lapel or on a cowl or scarf or hat and having a pin on it is really handy. But you could stitch it together to make a statement necklace or stitch it uh, and use it on afghans or coats or any kinds of vests or things that you want to uh, embellish. And along with the instructions comes the instructions for how to make the Thumbelina basic finger puppet or doll. If you choose to stuff um, the doll and sew it shut, then it's a doll. If you leave the lower edge open, then you have a very dear little finger puppet. And of course, what you decide to do with the face and the hair and your colors will make all the difference. It'll become totally uniquely yours. With the uh, basic Thumbelina doll uh, or finger puppet, the arms are all done in one piece so that the doll or finger puppet can hold little treasures in her or his hands. Now the last project is a little ball lamb, a little woven sheep that uses all of the techniques that the Thumbelina loom can be used to make. And it has the, the woven part the cord making part and the knitted part. So it's a really fun project that brings together all aspects of the Thumbelina loom. So I hope you're going to have a lot of fun with the Thumbelina loom. It's been a pure joy and delight to, um, first of all, to come up with the design for the Thumbelina and then to design all kinds of patterns and projects with it. Now the patterns and projects that I've just shown you now uh, are, they come with the loom, but I've got a list of designs that I'm working on that I will be putting up in my Etsy shop. So those will be coming, will be released later. But for now, I'm going to show you how to weave and uh, well the, in the instructions show you how to weave um, the written PDFs that come with the loom but I'm going to show you how to use your Thumbelina loom to make sweet little buntings and uh, name banners like this one. So happy weaving and 
also a happy multitasking with this clever little loom. Even if I say so myself, it is a delight. And I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I do. It's a tiny little loom, which is why I called it Thumbelina. You can see it easily fits in the palm of my hand. Now, I designed it, but um, you can't buy it from me because I don't sell them. Um, you can buy them from Dewberry Ridge uh, Looms, and I will put the link into the little um, paragraph that goes under the... the um, under the video and also too on my blog tottytotscrafts.com so happy weaving everyone happy thumbelina bye for now and i'm going to edit off and away to the instructions on how to make the um the banner and bunting now to make um, bunting or little banners using the Thumbelina loom. Here's the Thumbelina loom. You'll need to make uh, one little Thumbelina arch shape. You'll weave one of those for every letter in the word. Now I'm weaving one that's going to say Thumbelina. So I have ten uh, little of uh, the little arches woven. And this one I've already started to pin the cords on. You're going to have to also make um, the cord as well in a contrasting color, or I suppose you could do it in the same color. You can make any word you want uh, with uh, when you're making the bunting. And you can use it on wedding cakes or birthday cakes. Um, make a name for anyone's room that you want, uh, a welcome sign, direction signs for whoever you, wherever, whatever. What I'm doing right now is just stitching the corner strand of yarn that comes off. What it, When it comes off the loom, it's on the upper left-hand corner. And it needs to be stitched up along the side when you're doing uh, bunting because the uh, arch shapes will be hung upside down. And I'm not going to put any edging around them. If I was going to do edging on them, I could use the corner strand to stitch the edging to it. But with the um, when you're doing the bunting, the um, usually I think the banners are um, look just fine with just the edge as it comes up woven. Now, to you can see I've started uh, making letters for it. I have uh, made some cords. I'm obviously going to have to make some more. I made one cord that is um, about 24 inches long. Because the um, the word Thumbelina is ten letters long, I needed to make the cord that is going to be the hanging cord that's going to hold them all together. I wanted to put loops on the end, so I went a little bit longer uh, past each side, and then I'm going to make, I'll turn that up uh, in a loop before I stitch the arches onto it. You're going to need to um, take the end yarn in on the cords. And the way I do that is I either use a crochet hook or, or uh, the needle that comes with your loom. And as you can see, I'm just going into the edge of the cord and I'm going to take that into the cord and then I will take the end in, slide it into the cord and then pull on it and I want that end to be buried so I'm going pretty, pretty far along with it and then I just snip it off and I'll do that on both ends. Now, when I'm shaping my letters, I'm going to cut uh, my cords 
into the component parts of each letter. You can see, I just, I'll just finish stitching this one in. This one's not to... Uh, I kind of went tight there with those stitches, so let's go along here and just ease those in. And anyhow, what I was saying before is that I am, am doing the letters multicolored, multiple shades of pink. Just, I could use just a single color of pink, but I thought it'd be fun to work with different uh, colors. Now, here I've got the A pinned on, and I took a, a short length of one uh, of the pale pink for the, um, the curve of the A, and then used the fuchsia slightly longer to go uh, to make the upright part and then I have pinned each of the parts of the ladder to the um, to the uh, little arch shape and what I'll do is I'm going to use thread that matches the color of the background the reason why I'm doing that is because I would like to have the back of it clean finished if I use the pink, you would see, to match the cord, you would see possibly little little uh, flashes and bits of the pink. So by using a thread that matches the background color, that's going to drop away quite nicely. I'm going to show you how I shape the letters. Let's go with the B. So I will shape the upright lay the upright part here, get that kind of settled in and established and that looks about right for me. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the cord just a little bit further along. I just need to cut one of the legs of the one stitch and that's all that it takes. And what you do then is you just kind of tug at it and the, uh, um, the cords will separate. Then get your crochet hook or the needle, either one works just fine, and insert the crochet hook. Now the cord will, uh, the yarn will have come through one of the stitches, locking one of the stitches. And then you take your crochet hook through the other remaining stitch and pull it to seal the end. And then that end gets woven in either with the crochet hook or the needle. And you want to take it in a few times just so that it's going to be well enough um, latched into the other stitches that it's not going to pull out and go fluffy and fuzzy on you. And so now I'm going to give it a bit of a tug to pull it back in. And I'll trim the uh, end, the yarn ends off. There we go. Now that's ready to become another letter. Here's my B and I will do the same thing. Take that yarn end in, whoops I split my yarn, take the yarn end in through the loop, I mean the, pardon me, the crochet hook, grab your yarn end and, whoops, sorry, it's very hard to not hit the stand when I'm doing this, and take your end in. After I have woven my ends in, sometimes actually what I'll do is I will leave the ends but then stitch them in as I go as I'm stitching the letter down. That works too. There we go. Okay, so there's our cord for the B. So I'm going to, I will pin the upright of the B that vertical 
leg of it and then shape the little curved bit and pin it into place. So I will make the I will make all of the um, the cords enough cords to make all of the lettering and get them all pinned on. And then I will be stitching. This guy has fluffed up again. I'm going to trim that little bit of randomness off. There we go. Good. So um, I'll get all of the uh, letters pinned on and then I will stitch them. And the way I stitch them is pretty basic. I just take my needle and you know, you can tie a knot if you want to, or you can weave in across the back and pull it up to bury the end, and then take a couple of little stitches tiny little stitches to just anchor it and of course the yarn the thread's doing independent thinking things here on me okay so now that I've taken a couple of little stitches it's locked in then I'm going to go to the front and I will simply stitch in through the background, into the cord, taking tiny little stitches and picking up a bit of the cord to stitch it, whoops, sorry, uh, to stitch it to the arch shape. And you can pull your pins out as you go because they kind of get in the way. And that's how you stitch your letters on. It's very easy. It's quite slow and contemplative. Meditative. But it's not complicated. So I'm going to go off now and do some more. I obviously am going to have to make some more cord. And I will keep pinning and stitching and when I have all the letters done I'll come back and we'll talk some more and I'll show you how the um, how the each of the letters will then be stitched to the hanging cord so here I go off to make some more letters So here's the Thumbelina bunting all finished. Now what I did at the at each end was to fold the um, cord back on itself, wrap the yarn end around and stitch over that wrap to secure it. So I did that at both ends for hanging it up. Then I stitched after I had stitched all the letters on, I used the yarn ends to make, um, to just stitch the little um, arch shape to the cord. And just for a bit of decoration, to make it a bit more decorative, I took the, ed, the yarn end over and around the, um, the cord. And so that's how I did the Thumbelina bunting.